this invitation to meet death without an overlay, without interpretation, and therefore without interference. This is the courage to not know. The courage of meeting what is here from the unknown. And this is the same invitation in life and in the spiritual journey of awakening. That's why I say liberation. Life, death, and spiritual awakening are one. <laughs> yeah, the the, the one, one journey, the same, the same invitation, the same possibility of liberation from the tight knot of this ego construct that fears its own ending. This creates a lot of suffering, a lot of control in life too. That control can take many forms. Control can come in the, in the shape of amassing enough security and safety and comfort as if that will somehow <laughs> bypass death. <laughs> yeah? The inevitability of death. Amassing enough spiritual beliefs or any beliefs, religious beliefs, so that I can keep the fear of death at bay. And yet there it is lurking in the background. Control can take the shape of not meeting this life, this life, this moment. Purely, purely, nakedly, also without overlay, just as it is. So we attempt to have a safe life, a happy life, a secure life, not a wild and free and liberated life. Control takes place when we're afraid of ego death, which isn't really a death at all. It seems that way. It may be experienced that way, way, but actually nothing dies because the ego construct is a mirage, <laughs> a fabrication, a conglomeration of thoughts about myself. It's, the, it's, that, it's that thought not that comes undone and feels like a death, but actually nothing dies. But what happens is that you live openly, nakedly, 